Well, if you've been watching recently, we've been doing the scorecard of what happened in 2019. You've probably heard us talk about the Canadian dollar being that impressive performing major currency in 2019. Some of that had to do with Bank of Canada strategy. The fact that our central bank wasn't cutting rates, but they were south of the border and some central banks around the world were doing so as well. It's got us wondering, though, especially after some softening data so far, looking in the final months of 2019, what the central bank is going to do this year. Our next guest says there could be a cut by the Bank of Canada in the spring. Brian DePrado is a senior economist at TD Bank and he joins us now with his outlook for the Canadian economy this year. Happy New Year. Thanks for joining us. Happy New Year. Thanks for having me. As we start this new year, let's start off with what, what the Canadian economy looks like for 2020. Uh, it's a little bit ho-hum, uh, for lack of a better term. We don't really see a lot of catalysts one way or the other. So you're looking at a kind of a repeat performance uh, of, of 2019. We're looking at the consumer, you know, not super strong, uh, you know, performing, you know, roughly in line with population growth. Nothing to, you know, really get excited about. That's that backbone there, and that's keeping growth, you know, right around, actually a little bit below what we estimate to be potential. So if we if we look at the things that were moving stocks, uh, we mentioned earlier that low interest rates or moves to lower interest rates in the U.S. coupled with cooling some of those trade tensions seem to really get stock market investors excited. When it comes to those kind of things, trade tensions easing, lower rates in the U.S., maybe helping the U.S. avert a recession, do you see tangible um, uh, helpers for the Canadian economy from, from those potential things? Uh, there is some, certainly on the trade side, uh, that could be a, a positive lift. Uh, you know, we heard yesterday this phase one deal coming uh, mid-month, apparently. Right. Phase two following right after. Uh, you know, if you see more progress, you know, we shouldn't forget Europe still in President Trump's crosshairs. There's the, the Boeing Airbus uh, spat still ongoing there. But if we can get some positive resolution on that, as we've seen in some of the other files last year, uh, certainly that could be a positive catalyst. So then um, when it comes to the Canadian economy, uh, how much of it is, is tied to what's actually happening here and, and not what's happening abroad? Because I think we started to see some softening jobs numbers. We saw some softening retail sales data uh, before we took the, the holiday, the Christmas break. Uh, what would you say are some of the headwinds here at home right now? Uh, the big one I think uh, that we've seen through last year has to be uh, not just the household debt level, because we've known about that for a while, yeah. but the real, really the sensitivity to it. Uh, you know, we've seen the with retail come back in a big way. We've seen insolvencies uh, start to tick up. Uh, this seems like the rate sensitivity there is even higher uh, than we might have estimated or the Bank of Canada might have estimated. Uh, you look at some of the products where you're seeing the challenges. Uh, it tends to be the HELOCs, uh, you know, the unsecured lines of credit where the rate moves right away, not like a mortgage, but it rolls. Uh, that's where really we're seeing the stress. And so it seems like you know, that's really starting to be a bit more of a headwind uh, than might have been expected. And that gets us into a conversation around interest rate policy. We mentioned off the top that you wouldn't be surprised if in the spring the Bank of Canada were to cut rates. Um, for the last few months, it feels like we've been talking about this balancing act for the bank. On the one hand, if there's worries surrounding household debt, maybe it makes sense to lower rates, but of course the Bank of Canada is also sensitive to the fact that low rates encourage people to go out and take on more debt. That's exactly it. Um, so the challenge for them, I think, uh, and this is part of the reason why we think they're going to be limited uh, in terms of the easing they'll put through, uh, is exactly as you've described. So the issue is, of course, that they've benefited uh, to some extent this year from what uh, you described at the beginning, the, the fall in interest rates elsewhere, lower borrowing costs in states, you know, our five-year government rate tends to move with that. So they had a little bit of an easing just without even doing anything mm -hmm. last year. That's come to a bit of an end. We've seen that rate come up a little bit. Uh, certainly, you know, again, going back to the, the stress in the household side, seems like that's maybe a little bit higher than would be appropriate. Uh, you know, the, the loony, a little bit uh, the upper end of where we think it would or should be trading. All these things suggest that, you know, a, a little bit of an ease, a little bit of a, a reset, um, a change in guidance, too, to ensure that or to remind people that, you know, we're going to be keeping it low for a while. That could go a long way. Um, and again, in a limited fashion, so you get a little bit more credit growth, but they don't really want to restart that fire and make things even worse down the road. So um, it sounds like what you're saying um, ties into something that we have on our website, bnmbloomberg.ca, a story about maybe the Canadian dollar struggling a little bit in 2020 after being this very strong performer when it comes to the major currencies in 2019. Uh, absolutely. I think that's consistent with the outlook for, for Bank of Canada easing. Uh, and again, you know, it's, 
I think some of the strength we saw last year was Canada kind of going it alone to some extent, right? That, uh, as you mentioned, we didn't see easing here. Uh, all the other majors generally easing. You can see a little bit of the flip of that this year, right, where the Bank of Canada adjusts course a little bit as other central banks, you know, maybe hold the line. Does, um, does it matter that um, we're going to see a, a major shift at the Bank of Canada? Stephen Poole has, has already said he's going to be stepping down, so we're waiting to find out who his successor will be. Does that impact, do you think, what they're choosing to say about the Canadian economy and the moves that they might make? Uh, I think it plays into it, but I don't think it's a major factor. Okay. Uh, ultimately, you know, uh, Polas and Bank Canada, they're going to be pragmatic. Uh, you know, it's their job to, to try to steer the economy. Um, you know, certainly I would think no one would want their, their legacy, their last bit to be, you know, missing a turning point or missing, uh, you know, having unnecessarily tight financial conditions. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think it's a consideration, but I don't think it's the, the be all end all. And, you know, Governor Polas is going to want to keep the economy in the best shape he can have it for his predecessor. And uh, before we go, while we talk so much about whether rates stay the same or go down or go up, the reality is when it comes to central bank moves, sometimes it's the other stuff that is creating some excitement in the marketplace. Uh, the Fed using its balance sheet over the last few months, or even this morning we're talking about what's happening in China. If they're uh, telling the banks that you don't have to hold as much cash. It's almost like a liquidity injection into their system. So central banks have all sorts of tricks, essentially, they can use to try to stimulate their economies. You're absolutely right. Um, you know, here we've actually haven't seen very much of that at all. Um, there was a little bit uh, around, you know, in the crisis 09. Uh, but generally speaking, you know, the quantitative easing uh, changes, um, you know, to reserve requirements like in China, things like that. Uh, we haven't really seen um, certainly. You know, some of the, the changes you could envision where we'd actually, you know, get a real headwind, uh, some of those, would, I think, would have to come even from OSFI, right, from beyond the central bank, mm. uh, from the regulator, things like the mortgage underwriting rules, uh, things like that, where you could see a little bit of a, a kickstart there. Uh, but again, we're talking, you know, more of a, an extreme scenario there. Uh, more likely the Bank of Canada kind of, you know, one cut to adjust and, and holds there. To do that. Real quickly before we go, um, if we look at the U.S. economy, I think some estimating maybe growth of around 1.8 percent for the year, which would be slower growth, but it would keep the expansion moving along. What kind of number would you be looking for for the Canadian economy this year, Brian? Uh, for the Canadian economy, you'd be looking at about 1.6 percent this year. Okay. Uh, little a little bit slower less. than last year. Same, similar theme, right? A little bit of a deceleration. Uh, as you mentioned, we saw some softening towards the end of the year. That's taking a little bit of momentum out. Not a terrible number, just, again, kind of ho-hum. Okay. Brian, always good to get your perspective. Thanks very much, and Happy New Year to you. Thank you. Brian DePrado, Senior Economist at TD Bank Group, with his outlook for the Canadian economy.